Okay. Three, two. Camera right in front of me. One. Yep. You're live. Hi, folks. Sorry we're late. Apparently, we had some glitches over there. Its name is Frick. <clears throat> Welcome to our uh, Saturday Night Live in support of our Purple Heart Project. This is something that Jake and I started in 2016. Um, Luther joined us shortly after that, and we have grown it to, uh, uh, we cur- we've had 26 classes, we've had 175 soldiers go through our program, four I think were female soldiers, we've had soldiers come from as far away as Australia, two of them, we've had one from Ireland, one from uh, Denmark, uh, the, ba- the majority from the United States, but also Canada has sent us some as well. And what we do is we bring them in for a six-day, very intense hand tool workshop where we teach them how to, we teach them the skills required to build a piece of furniture like it was 200 years ago. And unbeknown to uh, me, and maybe them, was hand tool woodworking is a tremendous source of peace. There's something about cutting into a piece of wood with your hands where it's all your skill and a tool and a handheld tool. It's... Um, it totally pulls you in. Uh, you ca- tend to forget everything around you. The time stops. And uh, it, it pulls in on your creative ability. Everything. It's fantastic. So we continue to do it, even though we don't know much about what we're doing. But we do know wood, and we can teach it. So in addition to that, we uh, send each vet home with, a, in U.S. dollars, approximately $4,000 worth of premium tools. We have a bench brigade that uh, Jack Lane heads up, and Jim Rossetti here in Canada is his his Canadian arm, and uh, they build workbenches through volunteers to our spec and deliver it to the vet at their home so that they have a bench to work on. Anyway, it's an expensive venture. I think our latest estimate is about $350,000 U.S. per year. Um. And uh, we are sh- willing to share that blessing with those of you who want to participate. So tonight, the mop may very well get cut off. Been growing it for two years as a protest against intervention by those we elected, but I won't say any more about that. Anyway, so the gal whose business got shut down during the lockdowns was my uh, gal uh, where I got the haircut, my haircut. I used to rent a little spot to her. She's here. He's, she's going to do the chopping tonight. I'll introduce some of the other people as we go. But tonight's theme is uh, Ask Rob Anything. And I'm going to talk to you about my t-shirt, why I have my apron on my bench tonight. Very special reason. I'll introduce that some, uh, here shortly. But Frick, you had a question for me? Uh, sure, yep. Uh... Jake, what are you doing, son? <laughs> well, you're making a tremendous amount of noise. All right, first question is, what is your most memorable build? That comes from Brent Nelson in Fountain, Colorado. Brent Nelson. Now, if I were to look right behind me, would I see anything from Brent Nelson? This is Brent Nelson. I'm going to say this. I'm going to answer this question very slowly, like he cuts his dovetails. My most memorable build. Um, I, I don't know if I have one. Uh, I did a kitchen for a fellow named Steve Korsgaden, who's become a friend of mine. And uh, he came to me. I thought it was a joke, actually. He called me up on the phone. I didn't know him. He said, uh, I heard about you. Would you be willing to build me? Now, you have to know, going into this, cherry at the time was my favorite wood. I really I really like Shaker Furniture more than any, any other brand. And, of course, my forte is cutting dovetails. So this guy says, would you build me a Shaker-style kitchen out of cherry? And I'll pay extra to have all the dovetails cut by hand. Well, I have a brother, one, uh, several brothers, but one of my brothers, Mike, is really good at mimicking. He could call anybody in the family up and fool them. Moose knows Mike, also known as Cato. And I thought it was Mike, so I was going to smart back at him. But then I thought, oh, maybe I been, better not. Turned out to be real. And Steve, at one point, I had shown him a kitchen that I just finished for my brother Dave's in-laws. And Steve, looked at, looking at all the dovetails, he goes, wow, I didn't, didn't know people like you were still alive. So that kitchen took me 16 months, and uh, there was 52 drawers in it. I love making drawers. And uh, 
you know, everything was done the way it would have been done 150, 175 years ago. So that was, uh, that was close to the top. The, uh, lap, the uh, standing desk was really fun. And so was the, uh, the, little, uh, the little man uh, uh, bloke, bloke box. Yeah, that was too. And then, you know what? Unfortunately, when I was building furniture for a living and uh, had five children and couldn't feed them, um, when I finished something, it was out the door and gone. I had to get paid. So mo- a lot of stuff I don't even have pictures of of did. In fact, I, I probably forgot most of the stuff that I made, unfortunately, but that was just the, that was just the, uh, that was the time. I'm really enjoying this build, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about that tonight, too. This is going to be hard to part with when the time comes, but it'll go to a good cause. So in case you didn't know, and I'll tell you right now, so the hair is being cut tonight. Uh, we had a goal of rate. I said, Frick, this is all Frick. I said, T- we get $10,000, we'll, uh, we'll cut the hair. And then a bunch of people said, don't cut the hair. So we said, okay. So we'll pit the don't cuts, mop and no mop. And uh, what's our total frack right now, Frick? Uh, $17,720. So we, we, we passed our, uh, we passed our $10,000. Then I thought, well, let's go to 25. But our biggest night we ever had was 30,000. Would be really cool if we could beat that one. Where's the money go? The money's all going to, uh, help support Purple Heart Project. You, what, you, what your donation does, it either buys their plane ticket, it pays for their food, pays for their lodging it buys some of the tools that we send them home i have a chap I, he didn't tell me i could say his name but i got a text from him yesterday i'm just gonna i'm just gonna read it I'll, i'm gonna read his text inspired i think by santa claus and i'll remind me to talk about santa claus tonight too ken please uh, I'll, I'll leave his name off when i read this but i got this text yesterday and it said Uh, I'll call his first name. Hi, Rob. Dave here. I'll be attending the workshop training the hand in October. I just made I just made a seven thousand dollar donation to cover the expenses for one of the vets attending the same workshop. I've been planning this, waiting on a bonus from work. Uh, timing had nothing to do with the hair, but hopefully it will help that too. Thanks for all you do. I'm looking forward to October. So that's a, that, that's pretty generous. And Santa Claus and his wife. Last time we. Decided to take care of two vets. Well, do the math on that. That's fourteen thousand dollars. So, uh, you know, the generosity humbles me that we see. But you know what? There are people out there that realize what these people have done in our behalf. And why wouldn't we do this for them? I tell you, the government's not doing what they should be doing. So it's up to us. It's up to us anyway. It's up to me. It's up to you. Anybody that wakes up every morning and gets to choose what they do owes somebody that freedom, and it did not. It was not free. So, you'll get more than one lecture this night. Um, another question, Frick, and then I got to introduce my shirt. Uh, Dan Patton in Fall River, Nova Scotia. Oh, hi, Dan. Fall River's not, is, where's Fall River? Nova Scotia. I know, but you guys, <laughs> where? Ken, where's Fall River? Fall River, Scotia. Isn't it near Truro? It's in Nova Scotia. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, can I use honing oil on a whetstone? You can use honing oil on a whetstone, yeah. Okay, you don't yeah. want to use oil on Shapton stones. The Shapton stone is adhered to a piece of glass, and I assume it has something to do with the way it's adhered to the piece of glass, but you're told only to use water. You can use hone right. That doesn't bother it, but as far as a honing oil, that would actually be preferable on anything other than a Shapton particularly the diamond plate that rusts, but that's why we use hone rate because you can use it on both. One more question, and then uh, i got to introduce this, and this, and this. Bob is Kim, Kim, is just, would somebody make sure that Kim's on? Kim O'Connor? Yeah, I'm sure she is. Kim, if you're on, just say something to Ken. Do at Ken. You, t- you guys may need to communicate tonight. Go ahead, Frick. What was your next question? Uh, Bob in Pennsylvania says, do you still use the trend diamond stone in your sharpening system? Yeah. Yeah, it's right. Jake doesn't. I do. Oh, no, not the trend. Sorry. No, we don't use the trend anymore. Um, the, I don't want to tell you that long story about that, but we switched. 
to the same manufacturer. We just found that the trend, we were having too many problems with them. So a friend of mine, James, over in England, who was originally developed that stone, ended up uh, getting it, make it for us now. So no more problems. And every one of them are tested. We test them for flatness before we send them out. Okay, so let me tell you, let me, t- I got to introduce this, and I, I uh, hope I can do it justice. So we deal with combat wounded veterans. Uh, eight years ago, I didn't know anything about it other than what you'd hear on the news. Now I know a fair bit about them from having been around them. Many of them have become very close friends. We've lost one. Um, so the only person that is injured more than a surviving wounded vet is his wife. And if you can imagine, I had a, I had a conversation last time with one of the guys in here that uh, had had a, his attempt at suicide got interrupted by a child. And we were talking about that. And he said, Rob, you cannot have a rational conversation with an irrational person. He said, I had every reason in the world to live. My children, my wife, but... What they're battling on the other side puts them in a position where that doesn't even enter into the equation. There is, I don't, I can't, I can't speak to that, but there is pain there that seems so terrible that the only way to get rid of it is to end your life. Well, if you can imagine being married to someone that's under the, in that circumstance, at the same time, it's your job to take care of the kids and manage the house and keep everything together while this person is not together. And uh, through multiple deployments and just the worry of having them when they're gone, just, it's terrible. So I have a friend who um, went with her, they, their husband was being treated at a government facility. And uh, the last part of the treatment, I think it was for a week, they invite the entire family down. And at one point there was a chance for a discussion and she started to talk about some of the things she was going through. And they very rudely told her, this isn't about you. This is about your husband. And I thought, wow. These are people that just don't get it. They do not understand. So I've become very good friends with uh, Kim O'Connor, who is Jeff's wife. And she has a business that uh, they're both entrepreneurs. And they're trying to pull things together, doing very well. Their attempt is. And her, her, her business has evolved from snippets and stitches to, what's the name of it? The, stri- yeah. the striped tomato. The striped tomato. Sorry, Kim. Anyway, so this is, her, this is a T-shirt that she does. It's a whole series of them. You can, you, you, they're going to put your website up on the, up, up, up on the uh, site. So 757 is the area code in Virginia Beach. So this is Neptune on the back. So she has a whole series of these, and I want you to go order one. Because I'm going to do this for others as well. Do you see that patch on the side, on the, the arm? What do we call this? The arm, the sleeve. What do we call this? Sleeve what? I, I just call it a sleeve. Sleeve. <laughs> yeah. It's actually going to, it's going to say woodworking on there too. So it says supported, supported by RC Woodworking. So if you're a fan of our business, I want you to be a part of this. So if you go on her site tonight and order a nice, I love this t-shirt. It feels great, by the way. So, and we, we're going to, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to do this for other, other vets, spouses, and do whatever I can to use my platform to help them develop their business. So you get to proudly wear something like that. And it's a great topic of conversation too. You don't live near Virginia Beach. Why do you have a shirt on? Well, you see this and then you get to tell them. So here's what's going to happen tonight. For every t-shirt that Kim sells tonight, she's tracking this at home, we're going to put $10 in the kitty. And at the end of the night, I'm going to tell, well, she's going to tally that up. And if we sell 50 shirts and there's $500 in there, I'm going to give away $500. We're going to do a draw, a separate draw. She's going to take care of this for a $500 gift from our selection of tools. And the only people that will be in that draw are the people that actually bought the t-shirt. So you can imagine that uh, you got a pretty good odds of winning that one. So I hope you got all that straight. You go on to Kim's site, 
buy yourself a lovely t-shirt. I don't know what the material is, but I really like the feel of it. And uh, it's, it's very slimming. And um, you can choose what you want. It'll come with the... What? It's kind of hairy. It's kind of hairy. It'll come with the arm, the sleeve on there. So you can proudly uh, show what you're supporting. And you get your name in for the draw. Kim, give us a thumbs up or let them know that make sure everything is good on your end. Frick, next question, please. All right. Next question comes from Gary Stevens in Pasco, Washington. Oh, you know what? Just before you say that... So we're still taking donations, remember. So the, the site, the, uh, and we're a 501c3 in the United States. So we have official, what's it called? Charity status. Charity status. So you can get tax receipts for this. So go ahead and make your donation. At 930, we're going to, uh, pardon me, not at 930. In an hour, approximately, we're going to shut it down. And then I'll, I'll, the, 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 uh, the shears will come in. And we'll get a haircut. Can't wait. <laughs> Go ahead, Frick. Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, Gary Stevens in Pasco, Washington. Hi, Gary. Have you found a method for marking a pin board while using the Moxman vise? Oh, I, I, dang it. Uh, a couple people have sent me some ideas, and I actually do have an idea, and I didn't get to work on it. Did you? And Chris has got one, too. Promise next time we'll have it. We'll have it. I got a lot of stuff going on in the next uh, in the next uh, week that I got to tell you about. In fact, I got to tell you about one right now. So a week from th uh, Thursday evening in Edmonton, Alberta, at Gary Channon's uh, business, Channon Hardwoods. I hope somebody can put the link up on there. Excuse me. We're doing. Um, Al's coming with me, and you know Al, Tank. Uh, Strathcona Al, retired tank commander, Canadian forces, wounded, blown up in his last uh, tour in Afghanistan. Al's coming with me. So we are, I'm going to try to talk him into bringing the bagpipes too. We are going to do a two and a half hour presentation at Gary Channon's from 6.30 until 9. And I'm going to show you how to do everything you need to do with your hand plane, including sharpening and setting it up. I'm going to show you dovetails. This is for military only. So whether you're a wounded vet, whether you're a uh, retired military, active duty, or if you're a spouse, the idea is I want to expose as many people as possible to what we do in the Purple Heart Project. The guys who need this the most, we rarely find them. We find somebody in their family that knows them, and that trusted individual can take it to them and convince them to apply and, and have them come here. So the idea is to get as many military people there as possible so I can show them, give them a chance to come up and run a plane over a board and put a smile on their face. And then I just, I just made the call to all of the, uh, shoot, that's what I wanted to do tonight. Talk about the blue chip. I was, gonna, I was going to uh, highlight some of the guys. I just made the call to the first... Four, class, four times seven, 28 selectees. So these are the vets who have applied that have been accepted to our program. I'm not counting, but we didn't have any Canadians. We had a Canadian on there, but he's actually U.S. Forces. No Canadian military were represented. And I think, you know what? We, we should be. We should be represented. There's no quota. I just think I'm doing this in Canada. We, we are doing, doing a good job of getting the word out here. All right, so Gary Channon's, Channon Hardwoods, Thursday night, 6.30 to 9. Love to see you there. Rick, question, please. Next one comes from Keith McKillop in Barry Mills, New Brunswick. Oh, hey, Keith, Barry Mills. That's just near Fredericton. Uh, no? Oh, Moncton. Sorry, Moncton. Yes, that's your dude. First turn off. Right. Do you recommend using pine to learn dovetails before you try hardwood? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the reason is pine is uh, so easy to saw, um, requires very sharp chisels, so you learn that right away. But it, the best part is that uh, there's two best parts. One best part is it takes an element of, it, it forces you to use an element of finesse with your tools. You set your chisel down too hard, you're going to leave a mark. Wouldn't do that on hardwood, but it will on pine. So you can't pry 
Like when you're cleaning out between the tails, you can't get in there and pry against the side. You're going to leave a mark. So you learn to you learn to be very careful with your tools. Second reason is because it doesn't require a tremendous amount of force to push the saw through, you get to focus on your technique without having to have that extra muscle in there. So I think it's the best wood to actually learn to cut your dovetails. In fact, I've taught classes where we used hardwood, and the results are actually usually better because, like I said, the pieces don't show the rough handling like pine does. So if you pull off a really good dovetail like this one right here, Brett, this is well-aged out of pine, then you can do them in hardwood, and uh, they'll look fantastic. Uh, another quick little thing. So we just released... How long has it been, Jake, since we did an advanced class? How far back would you have to go? Like 2005? It was before. No, I haven't done any since 2016. Oh, my. It's been over 10 years. So we just decided to, uh, we, we managed to make, arrange our schedule. Ken, can you give me the dates, please, for the advanced classes? I know there's one in May, there's one in July, and there's one in October. 12 spots in East, uh, five or six have already sold. And it's going to be on drawer making. May 27th to June. Dates are? May 27th to June 1st, July 29th, August 2nd, October 7th to 12th. Good, thank you. You'll learn to build the case to a level of precision that will surprise you. You'll learn to build a drawer that fits in such a way that it just goes in there like a, I wouldn't say hand in a glove. It's better than that. Piston in a block. Porsche. No rings required. So, if you're interested, this, the information is up on our site now. You have to have had the training the hand class, whether it was recent or a long time ago. You have to have had that. There's a few extra tools, but we, uh, we're actually renting them too this, this time. Oh, 830 won't come quick enough. Next, Frick. Uh, next one I comes my hat on. I from... Can't stand this my eyes. You want to wear the new one? Huh? Want to wear the new one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, where's, Jake, where's the new hat? It's on my head. Oh, it's only <laughs> one? Do you yeah, have I only, any I only picked up. I only picked up one. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, am I going to become tech savvy as soon as I put this on? Nope. <laughs> it's our new hats. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Within the week, I think. Go ahead, Frick. All right, next one comes from um, um, Dave Murtis in live Lake Jackson, Texas. Hi, Dave. He said, what would you recommend as a lust, a, a lust, <laughs> a rust preventative for, sure. for your saw blades when in a high humidity environment? Uh, are we going to do those, Jake? Are those sleeves? Yeah. Where are they? Where's one? Uh, no, no, but there's some here. We're not? So I can't even show them? So we have, uh, we have a, what, what are we calling it, a sleeve? A, a sleeve, something that you can put your saw in that's made. What's the name of the material? But it's called VCI, Vapor Inhibiting, or VCI. Vapor corrosion inhibitor. So it's a material that you put your saw in there and you won't have to worry about it. So people ask me about planes all the time. What do I do to keep the, to keep the rust off my planes? Well, I hate putting on oil and taking it off. And I same thing with wax. So we use plane socks. And a plane sock, think of a, a green tube sock. And the material is impregnated with this stuff. So when you put your plane in there, it doesn't rust. You take it out and use it. When you're done, you put it back in. So we're going to have something for the saws as well. So outside of that, you got to oil them, but then you got to take the oil off every time, which is a bit of a pain. Jake said we will have sand. He doesn't. Have, you don't have a mic on, so anything you say, I can't hear. Jake said we'll have samples of it this week, so that could be within the next couple of months. Next question. Uh, this one comes from Lorraine Kirkham in Lancashire, England. Hi, Lorraine, over in England. She says, I got glue on the teeth of my Cosman saw, and they turn black and tarnished. How can I restore the teeth? Buy a new saw. 
How can you restore the teeth? Well, as long as they didn't pit, uh, what can we take? Oh, probably, probably the best, uh, the best way to do it. Did the dog get it, Jake? Here's right here. These things. This is called a um, Sandflex. Comes in a little sleeve. It's a piece of rubber, and it has a silicone carbide abrasive in it. And uh, it's all the way through it. It's not just on the surface. So you can just go in there and rub that, and it'll clean it up. If I had a, if I had a rusty saw, I'd show you. I don't think I have any marks on any of my saws. The, uh, the Wood Whisperer is with us. Mark? Oh, thank you, Mark. Mark I, I asked a couple of guys, fellow YouTubers, who uh, did me a wonderful favor of spreading the word about this. Mark Spagnola from the Wood Whisperer and uh, James Wright from uh, Wood by Wright. And both of them uh, were very kind to help us out. So thank you, boys. Certainly appreciate it. So we'll remember that when we tally that up tonight. Which is, by the way, what? where are we, Frick? What are our numbers? We are currently at 20,700. 20,700. That's awesome. So if you want to know the numbers, it's, uh, what did we figure? It's per vet? 7,000 or is it 7,100 or something like that? I'll say seven. It's approximately $7,000 per vet. You know, and that covers everything from their airfare right through to, to the, what tools they send home and and uh, all the expenses in between. So, wow, well, that has risen. Wood whisperers on. Yeah, yeah they so just did. Okay. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a big chunk of change. It's an opportunity for you to participate, and you want to feel good about doing something. I, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a quick example. So Jack Lane runs the Bench Brigade, and when we first started the Bench Brigade, which would be it's coming up four years, Ken. Four years ago? I think we, we, see, if Jack's on, Jack, tell me how many benches we've delivered. But uh, we were trying to figure out how many people we needed, and Jack figured we needed about 36 volunteers. We ended up, we have well over 300 now in a half a dozen or more countries. So what happens is the volunteer uh, uh, agrees, agrees to get procure the materials. We send them the vice and the bench dogs, which is the big expensive part. We send them the plans. And they build the bench, and then Jack coordinates it so that, if at all possible, that individual can actually take the bench to the vet, meet him, and help him set it up. I, I, it never fails. When they do the first bench, they want, to be doing, they want to do another one and another one. If you haven't figured out, uh, there are very few things in life that will make you any happier than helping someone else out, which is time for me now to give it a little plug. So... We had a guy named Dave come from South Dakota. Yeah. South Dakota this David past Miller. summer. David Miller. David Miller. And he at some point during early in the week he said, Rob, I came here for a reason. I want to talk to you privately at some point. I said, Yeah, no problem. So one or two days later, he pulled me aside and he said, I recently uh, four years ago I started a chapter of a charity called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. And um what we do is we build beds. They're simple, but they're sturdy. Build beds, and we provide them for children who do not have a bed to sleep in, which the estimate is some, it can be as high as 15% of the children in North America do not have a bed to sleep in. That means they sleep on a cold floor, lucky to have a towel or a bed sheet. He said in that little town that they live in, which I think the population is right around 40,000, they've delivered 20, in how many? 20,000. 20, oh, that's even worse. They, in four years, they have delivered 2,000 beds, and there's still a waiting list. So the need is huge. Well, I got thinking about that, and I said, you know, we bring these soldiers in, and if you, if you don't know what it's like to, be, uh, to have PTSD, then um, the best I can tell you is if you spend time in a war zone and behind every rock, tree, lump of sand, somebody's trying to kill you, or worse, they're trying to kill your men. And the part we civilians don't understand is soldiers are taught that your life is more important than mine. So I will give my life to protect you. 
And you do the same thing. And I guess that's how you sleep in a foxhole with your partner because you know you can sleep. He's watching over. So you spend your uh, 10 years, your 20 years in that war zone. You, you're always on a heightened state of awareness. This is called hypervigilance. You cannot let that your guard down ever. Super Dave explained this to me one time. And he told me the story about being in a, uh, somewhere up near the Pakistan, uh, Pakistan border. Jake, follow along with me so you can know. Anyway, they were going in to meet with tribal elders. And there's a term over there that more or less states that if a stranger is in your home, you're sworn by code to protect him. But once he steps outside your home, he's fair game. So as Dave said, there are no roads there. So they're following along this path. The river's on their left. There's a cliff on their right, so there's no room to move. And everybody's a little bit nervous because they know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to get there. They're going to have their meeting. Meanwhile, everybody's being made aware that they're in town. And then uh, when they leave the meeting, something's going to happen. He said, sure enough. He said, we no sooner got in our vehicles and fire broke out all over. And he said, we were in a firefight for I don't know how long it lasted. And he said, your adrenaline is just pumping because you got bullets whizzing by you. He said, the next day I'm on an airplane flying home for two weeks of R&R. And he said, I'm still jacked up from this experience. He says, I can't be walking through a mall. No idea who's behind me, who's beside me, who's around that corner. That doesn't get turned off so easily. So a lot of these guys are unable to function in society through no fault of their own. So what do you do? Well, we bring them in and we give them what I guess we call distractive therapy. We set them up with some skills and some tools that allows them to occupy their time. But how long is that going to last? What if you actually had something to do with those skills learned? So when Dave told me about this, I said, you know, this is perfect. I mean, soldiers are soldiers because of their desire to help others, strangers. And here's an opportunity to help the most vulnerable in society, these children who, through no fault of their own, are in a situation where they don't even have a bed to sleep on. And this is something they can get as engrossed and and involved in this as much as they want. So I'm actually taking Al. Al and Ken and I are starting a chapter here in St. John, New Brunswick. And we're going out to Alberta for some training. And on Saturday, if you're interested, if you're in the Edmonton, Calgary area, on Saturday there's going to be a build. So these anybody who's interested in starting a chapter, we're all going to be there for training. And it's open to the public. Anybody that wants to find out can come there on Saturday and participate and watch and find out about it and see how it's being done. I'm going to bring the chapter president from Alberta, from Edmonton. He's going to come Thursday night and explain when we're at Gary Channon's. He'll take 20 minutes and talk about the program. So uh, if you're you're looking for something to do that will really put meaning into your life, and by the way, who am I to be giving you advice, but I'm going to anyway. If you've got lots of problems your own, Go find somebody else who's got more problems than you, and yours will melt away. And this is a great, as good a way as I can think of. And by the way, you don't just provide the bed. It's the mattress. It's the bed sheets. It's the pillow. It's the pillowcase. Everything that child needs to have a bed to sleep on. Pretty incredible. Uh, did I? I know I kind of went off track there, but did I get answer the question that I was supposed to be answering? You guys are supposed to follow along with me and help out. <laughs> what was the question, Frank? It was about glue on the... Sawtooth plates. Oh, yeah, well, okay. Well, that, I, I didn't see the connection. <laughs> Next question. I just want to give a quick shout-out to the St. John Choir, or Port City Choir. They just donated $100. Oh, yes. That it's, was my, uh, my friend of my wife's. Yeah, she's our natural path. Ah. Oh, that's... Um, Franca. Franca. Yeah, I've been to her. Thank you. Appreciate it. Also... Hey, don't forget, get your T-shirt. Go to, go to Kim's website, Stripe Tomato... Order your T-shirt. You be you can proudly state why you're doing what you're doing. Supported by, and that yours will say RC Woodworking underneath. So if you're a fan of ours, because we're a fan of yours, we're a fan of yours. Yes. <laughs> Support a veteran-owned business, and even more so, a spouse of a veteran, combat wounded veteran. So you go and buy a T-shirt tonight from Kim. She's going to track it. Every T-shirt she sells are putting ten dollars in the kitty. At the end of the night, we're going to do a draw for a prize that could be worth a lot of money. And the only people that will be in that draw are the ones that buy a T-shirt. And you will love the T-shirt. I chose the Neptune one, which was the most uh, Virginia Beach-like. What? 
<laughs> feminine. Yeah, of course. That's well, I also bought one. We should, uh, Frick's got one on and so does Jake. Jake, come over here and model it, would you, for a minute? The same shirt? Yeah. Is it different on the back? <laughs> Is it no, it's the same. <laughs> Jake's is inflatable, Jeff said. So there's there we are, twins. All right. Um, we'll have uh, we'll have Kim come on for a second before we start the haircut to let us know how it went. Okay. So uh, I got I got to just I got to do some introductions tonight. Subi, Luke, uh, wait, just a sec. Subi, Subi alerted us to the um, the results of Jay Bates saw giveaway, and he raised sixty okay. five hundred dollars. Oh wow! And that was for what? One saw, two. Dovetail and joining with CrossCut. Oh, CrossCut and joining. 6,500. Thank you, Jay Bates. And thank you, those who, who participated. Awesome. So, so, so that actually reminded me. So we are going to be in Florida. We are doing a... Uh, give me the dates, please. Can you, can you pull out all the dates for both those? Okay. So the first date you need to know is going to be the Thursday, please. The Thursday in March. On on the March 29th, the Thursday, at the Woodcraft Store in Orlando, Florida, that night I'm doing a special presentation just for veterans, and I'm going. It'll be a little bit long. It'll be about the same one we're going to do in Edmonton. The 28th. What did I say? Sorry, the 28th, which is a Thursday, at the Woodcraft Store in Orlando. If you're a veteran, you are welcome to come. No charge. And I'm going to go through and teach you about planes, setting them up, using them, shooting boards, and dovetails, hand cut, how to hand cut dovetails. So come. On the next day, these are, all for, these are all classes that cost. The next day is the 29th, which is a Friday. I don't know whether that's the hand planing and sharpening or the dovetail. I think it's the hand planing. It's an all-day all uh, work uh, uh, seminar, including lunch. We were taking care of your lunch. You're going to learn everything you need to know about a hand plane so that you can eliminate sandpaper from your life. That'll be sharpening, setting up your hand plane, using a shooting board, the whole bit. Then on the Saturday, the next Saturday, that, that next day is going to be on dovetails. In the morning, we're going to go through, and I'm going to teach you everything I know. I know more. I got some new stuff on through dovetails, and then in the afternoon, it's going to be on half blinds. I got new stuff there, too. And lunch, that lunch is included. If you want to do it, both classes, there's a deal they're offering. The following weekend, that Thursday, I'm going to be in Clearwater Beach at the Woodcraft Store there. The Thursday night is going to be for veterans only. And the same program. This Friday, all day Friday, is a seminar on hand planes, everything hand planes. And on Saturday, it's going to be dovetails. Half, three dovetails in the morning, half planes in the afternoon, lunch is included. You can contact the stores. We haven't nailed down everything, but contact the stores with your intent, and because and there's limited seating too. Are you gonna be at the Tampa Bay one? That's a question on here. Yeah, it's the Tampa Bay. It's in. It's actually in Clearwater Beach. Okay. Uh, Tim, Tim Beach in the chat said before seeing Dave. Be Dave Miller on your show. I became a member of the Austin, Texas, Sleep and Heavenly Peace chapter. Today we delivered 38 beds. Wow. Thank you. I've heard that. I've heard a couple stories like that. So I'll keep prompting it. Then you know, there's just you got to under. People say, Rob, why do you do this? Come and sit in one of our classes for for a couple of hours with these vets, and you'll understand. You'll want to be a part of it. This isn't something that you can ever do too much. And the more you do, the more you want to do. You will catch on. Trust me. I'm going to say it one more time. If you're down because of your own problems. Go find somebody who's got more problems than you and do something about it, and yours will melt away. It's that simple. Got to have faith before the miracle happens, by the way. Uh, Frick, let's, uh, before I introduce everybody, uh, let's give me another question, please. Okay. Uh, Mike Evans in Tennessee. Hey, Mike. Says... Do you see a de decrease or an increase in interest in traditional woodworking in North America and Europe, given the high cost of wood? Oh, no. Big increase. Wood's not that expensive. I mean, it, yes, it's gone up in price, but you just got to be a little more frugal and a little more careful with it. But it's still pretty inexpensive material. You can, chase, you can pay $40 green fees and chase a little white ball around the field, lose most of them in the woods. What do you come home with? Frustration. 
Or you can spend that same money on some wood and build something that'll make your wife love you even more. <coughs> right, Moose? By way of introduction, so we have Troy here tonight. Troy's our esteemed goalie. <laughs> and uh, Wait, I finally see. found a net that Troy could defend and maybe even get a shutout. So Angie gave it to me. I'm passing this one on to Troy. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll be looking for some top cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Moose is here, the pro pro procurer of the dead cat purveyor, sweater. Purveyor. Purveyor. Purveyor of the. Well, he procures them, but he's the purveyor. Right? We get that right? Where's Frick, my uh, English major son in law? I wasn't paying attention. No, never are. <laughs> I'm looking at the questions. Yes. Moose is here. We'll do a draw at the end of the night for three dead cat sweaters. Keep you warm, keep you cool, does everything. Ken's here. Ken is Ken and I are sharing the responsibility of star, of uh, what what's our position, Ken? With sleep and heavenly peace. Co-chapter presidents. Co-chapter presidents. Ken's a manager of our shop, keeps everything humming over there. So if you like what you get from us, thank Ken. And then right beside him is Chris, and Chris is an engineer that uh, I think we employ you more than your employer does. <laughs> And uh, what are you working on for us right now? Wood handles. Wood handles for, for all of our saws. That's coming soon. Resin impregnated. Uh, Chris has got a program doing that. He's working on, he's been helping Jake on the plane that we are about to release, perhaps this year. It's going to be at a cast stainless. It's a five and a half. It's called the Super Five and a Half. And if you know anything about who we are, you'll understand where the Super came from. What else are you working on? We'll think of more stuff. He's just overwhelmed. And then we've got Irvin over there, Irvin's lifelong friend of Frick's. He's filming for Instagram for us tonight. I know, I know Luther's on. And Angie's on. Angie. So if you don't know Angie, you can buy another T-shirt. This is Ken's niece. And Angie works for us from home right now. That could change. And she and her sister, Lynn, package up all of our T-shirts. So if you buy a Purple Heart T-shirt and it comes nicely packaged, you'll see a little seal on there, and that's Angie. Hi, Angie. Santa Claus on? I think he and Mrs. Claus were going to be on tonight. If you, if you hear from... Oh, by the way, and if you're a wounded vet that has been to one of our classes, I always love to give you a shout-out. So you just need to go in the chat and you go at Ken and then tell him your name and what class you were in so we can give you a shout-out. Has anybody been doing that, Ken? Not yet. I forgot to mention that. Don't forget, don't forget your T-shirt. Go to Kim's the stripedtomato.com and uh, order a T-shirt and get in on that draw. If you're looking to up your skills and you want to become part of, uh, you want to especially drawer making, look at coming into our class. We still have some room. All right, Frick. Next question, please. Um. Uh, Jeff Sager in Washington. Hi, Jeff. Washington State. What are your tips for sharpening uh, of the different shapes of molding plane irons? Well, the easiest way to do them is to just sharp. It's just to polish the back. Um, and then the other thing, then what I've always done is just take a dowel. You may have to turn it yourself to get the shape you want, and just put some sandpaper, wet dry paper around that dowel and use that to, to work the bevel. That's, that's the best you can do. Next, Frick. Uh, Tim Beach in Cedar Park, Texas. Hey, Tim in Cedar Park? Yeah. Hi, Tim. What type of finish do you prefer on your projects and why? Well, I'll, uh, I'll get on my soapbox for this for a minute. So I, I deal with a lot of woodworkers and uh, what you come to realize is finishing was a skill in and of a trade in and of itself. This guy built it, this guy finished it. Because if you want to get really good at it, you've got to devote the same amount of time to finishing as you do to building a piece of furniture. We're trying to do it all. We don't have time to become an expert in multiple different types. So I, I have two. I use an oil product made by, what's the name of the company? The brand is Circa 1850, and it's a tongue oil product. Um, it's easy to apply. 
Ken, can you grab, or here, Chris, would you, it, there's a can of it right on top of that red tool cabinet. Would you bring it to me? It's kind of a yellowish can with a red top. I like it because it, uh, on about the fourth or fifth coat, it really is nice. But it's labor intensive. You wipe it on, you let it dry for a few minutes, and then you wipe off the residue. If you're doing it on anything porous like oaks or ash or walnut, the oil has a tendency to bleed out of the pour after the fact and then harden and you get a little hardened dot. It's, it's not an easy, it's not a, um, it's not a simple finish. But anything I turn on a lathe, that's what I like to use. Sometimes in small boxes. I will caution you. What, it, what I don't like about it is it'll, it'll go in and it'll highlight your joint lines because it seeps down in and it goes into, I'm assuming this is what happens, it gets sucked into the end grain and it'll make that joint line darker than you would want it to be. So you kind of have to be careful that way. But there's what it looks like. That's the can. The second finish that I use is a lacquer. Now, up here in Canada, we buy a lacquer that is the only certified lacquer that for kitchens, use in kitchens, meaning it's somewhat waterproof. Most lacquers are not. But you've got to get good at spraying. It, I, I mean, I've never, I've never had great success brushing on a lacquer. But spraying it, that's a different story. If you do, make sure you protect your lungs. You're breathing in volatile chemicals. Uh, you want HVLP, high velocity, low pressure, HV. High volume, low pressure, yeah. Then you don't waste so much. You don't have so clouds of vapor around you. But so the two, I use lacquer and I use oil. One, and I, that's really, I don't, go, I don't go outside of that. And the nice thing about lacquer too is when you, have to, when you have to repair it, new lacquer just blends in and becomes a an homogenous, an homogenous, homogenous surface. So unlike urethanes, which layers build on layers, Lacquer just keeps getting thicker and thicker because every layer you spray on adhere, uh, melt, melts into the layer before it. So easier to repair. Next question, Frank. That was a good one. Uh, Did anybody comment on the shirt? They liked them? Yep. I think they're selling pretty well, but we'll get Kim to tell us. Good. The, uh, good. Let's show some love. You have no idea what these spouses of combat wounded vets go through. I can't imagine it. And the divorce rate among uh, wounded vets is just unbelievable. So, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. But the ones that stick it out, my goodness, salt of the earth. Absolute salt of the earth. So let's help them because we're going to. When you want to be part of us, we're going to. Next, Frick, please. Uh, next one comes from David Mackey in Fairfax, Virginia. Hey, David. He says, what's your favorite MASH episode? Uh, my favorite MASH... Well, I hated, the, I, hated the, I hated the final episode. Jake, what's our favorite MASH episode? <clears throat> it would coincide with some of my favorite lines. So my, my favorite character was Frank Burns. Nobody could be a better villain than Frank Burns. And uh, the episode where uh, they had a guy, a, wound, a wounded soldier in who was a little bit different, and Frank was giving him a hard time, and uh, Hawkeye and uh, BJ were riding Frank for, for uh, the way he was treating them, and uh, because he wasn't towing the line, wasn't like everybody else, and, and BJ said to Frank, he said, well, Frank, what's, what about individuality? And Frank said, well, individuality is fine as long as we all do it together. <laughs> so that might be my best, that might be my favorite episode. But then there was Colonel Steele. That's three E's, not all in a row. That was the Colonel Potter episode before he became Colonel Potter. He showed up one time as Colonel Steele. Little cuckoo. Rick, next. Uh, Dan McFarland in Columbia, Missouri. Hey, Dan. He says, uh, hi, Rob, would you recommend getting wooden hand screw clamps for hand tool woodworking? You know what? I don't have any. I don't have any. I, I never did like them. We had them at BYU. I never liked them. Some people might. My favorite, and I suppose what's nice about them is you can actually make them yourself. But my favorite clamps, Jake, remind us to inquire about these again come Monday. 
My favorite clamps are Bessie F clamps. And these are the Tradesman brand. Um, they're, they would considered to be a light, maybe of a medium duty. And the better you get, the less clamping pressure you need. But the uh, clamps that you asked about, I, I, don't, I don't even own one. So uh, just, I, just, I never liked them from the beginning. So oh, nothing wrong with them, I don't imagine. Enough people do use them. But these are the ones I like. So I've got, my, I've got a cart that is full of these. I, I, I would scare you if I told you how much this cart was worth with all of its contents. I'll drag it over so you can see it. We built this as a project in the online workshop one year. So everything you see on this side is the exact same on this side. So instead of dragging your clamps, you could just cart that over with you. Made out of bird's eye and mahogany to match the bench and eventually to match the cabinets behind me. Next, Rick. Um, Lester Smith in Marietta, Georgia. Hi, Lester. Pause. No, there's something going on with my camera. Um, how would you approach attaching a top using your dowel technique if you wanted all the movement to occur to the front? Example, a bookcase that is against the wall. So, uh, what he's, Lester, Lester's talking about, i got an example right here. This is a chair that I made a long time ago. In fact, this chair goes back uh, into the uh, early, like, 1990. How many years ago was that? 35, 34? So you've got a solid wood seat on a frame. This frame is not going to get any longer. This frame is not going to get any wider. Grain runs this way. Grain runs that way. So the frame is stable. Seat isn't. Because the grain direction of the seat, the seat is going to get wider, but not any longer. So when you build this, I've got dowels that are in a hole. Not, not, the hole isn't uh, 360 degrees. It's probably 300 degrees. Flattened off at the top. But the radius of the, uh, of the hole comes around, so it, kept, it holds onto that dowel. So this dowel can be glued and screwed to the seat, but it's a dry fit into the hole. This dowel is glued into both. Because of that, remember, it doesn't have to, be, it doesn't have to worry about going this way. It's not going to move this way, only this way. This center dowel here and the center dowel here keeps all of the movement going equal that way and equal that way. You can see a little bit of, if you look right there, you can see how this is winter. Things are shrinking. You see a little bit of a, a white line where the oxidation just from the chair moving. Anyway, so this is allowed to pull out or go in a little bit deeper as this expands or contracts. You've got to make sure that the holes you cut... You don't put the dowel right to the bottom of the hole. Defeat the purpose. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap in there. Now his question is, what would I do? How would I do this so that all of the movement came forward? So you're, if, if, uh, let's say that, his, let's say that uh, this is his table. Oh, wait a minute. I've got a table here. Yeah. Where's that? Yeah. That's fine, yeah, but that's uh, upstairs. So if this is my table frame, my grain's running this way, I'm under the assumption. So I want all the movement to go that way. Well, it, that would be easy. I would just fa make it fast on the back. I mean, I would glue and fasten this to this along that back line. Now everything's going to go in this direction. So you would do the same thing on these ones, only I'd probably make them a little bit, leave a little more gap in between the bottom of the hole you drill in the stretcher and the dowel. Because now you've got, to, you've got to account for all of the movement in one as opposed to in two like we would normally do. You're not going to be able to hold it over here that, the traditional way because uh, you don't have any way of putting a dowel in to allow it to move. So what I would probably do over here is just have a slot. If I were to cut a slot, let's say an eighth of an inch slot that went parallel to the grain or parallel to the top, and then I just put some some uh, 
pieces of wood that had a slot that, shoot, let me draw it. How about a piece of paper? It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a yesterday's team on it. I do. I do. Or a whiteboard. Here, I, I, I got some here, Ken. So here's what I would do. I would have a tab. A tab of wood like this. Screw down through it like that. And then you have, if I it did it, uh, if I did a, if this is my my stretcher, the stretcher would have a slot in it like that. That would be fastened to the underside of your top. There's your screw going down in through here, and that slot runs the whole length of this, so that as this is moving, it's staying tight, meaning you don't have a, not going to have a big gap here where your, your top comes up against your stretcher, it'll keep it tight, but it'll allow it to move. And I would, make, I would glue and screw this to the underside of the table so that that tab of wood right here was able to move laterally in that slot. And that'll keep things nice and tight. And, th and that was a method of, keeping, of doing the whole thing. I just did this as kind of a, a, I thought it was a neater way of doing it. So if I was going to do that, I would probably do the whole thing that way. And you don't you don't have to you don't have to run your slot on your stretcher the whole way as long as if you went you know a couple of inches so that there was room for it to move. That's how I do it. Um, what else did I want to mention? Something I forgot to mention, Ken. What is it? Uh, Santa. Yeah, I thank those boys. I gave Troy his goal to defend. Yeah. Yeah, well, if there's something else, I'll think of it. Don't forget to check out sleepinheavenlypeace.org. Is that what it is, sleepinheavenlypeace.org? Sleepinheavenlypeace.org. Sleepinheavenlypeace.org. Check that out. There's lots of chapters in the United States. There's very few in Canada. Next question, Frick. Oh, did we get any vets to say hello to yet? Yeah, we got a bunch here. Okay, read them off, please. Uh, Walter Rao. Hey, Wally. Wally's up in Ontario. Rick, Air Force. Rick from Maine. Rick. Rick Elder. <laughs> hey, Rick. Rick is a Rick is a great guy. Rick does a lot. Does some teaching at the Travel Travis Mills Foundation, which is Travis Mills. I believe was a, a, a quadruple amputee, Jake. I think he is. Travis Mills is a quadruple oh, amputee. amputee. And he has a place down in southern Maine that brings vets in. And one of the things Rick does is teach uh, leather craft. So we've had, Rick has sent us stuff before that we've auctioned, not auctioned, but given away that uh, he's made. Very good craftsman. Thank you, Rick. And he's also, oh, yes, every once in a while, flight gets screwed up. And we got a vet that gets stranded down in Maine. Can't come in until the next day. And I call up Rick, and I said, Rick, I need your help. What do you need, Rob? I'll be there. And he'll go down to the airport, pick the vet up, bring him up to Callis, and then we send somebody down to Callis to get him here. Just awesome of him. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Next. Who else you got? Uh, Michael Cook. Mike Cook. Mike's a local. Mikhail Mike, Mike, wait a minute. i got to talk about Mike. Go ahead. So Mike is a Canadian Special Forces who happens to live just in Nova Scotia. And Mike comes over. Mike and his wife come over and see us every once in a while. Great guy. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mikhail Miller. Ma oh, Mike. Mike Miller. Mike Miller. Mike's daughter has applied for our uh, Purple Heart our, for our uh, Purple Heart project. Mike, <laughs> I'll never forget Mike. Now, after he remind us of uh, his story that he told. Another Mike. Mike Delvoy. Yeah, Mike, where's, where's Mike, Jake? I always say Florida. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. You better move to Florida, Mike. Uh, Brent Nelson. Brent Nelson, slowest dovetailer in the world, but also the best. Actually, Brett and, uh, and another chap did a 
thing on Fox News out in Colorado just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they were stars. Told the story of the Purple Heart Project. So this is Brett. His dovetail's up there. One of the best I've seen. Um, Did I say slowest, too? Ray Door. Ray Door. <laughs> cool Ray. So Ray is a, uh, a Vietnam vet down in Louisiana. He drove a mule. So if you don't know what a mule is, look up what an army mule was. Stupidest looking thing. But uh, he, he likes to drive them through minefields. I'll never forget that story. Hey, Ray. Uh, Jim Eakin, a.k.a. Goldeneye. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jim is a, uh, Jim is a uh, marvel of medical science. I swear somebody in that operating room actually builds stuff at home because who else would think of it? So, so uh, um, he got hit. His Humvee got hit. And I think he was in the passenger. He was in the passenger on the driver's side, second seat, and he caught the blast. And one of the one of the damages was to his uh, the nerves on the side of his face, so his eyelid his eyelid wouldn't uh, wouldn't function. So they inserted a little gold bar. So you got to look real close, and you see a little rectangular shaped gold bar in his eyelid, and it's heavy enough that that's how he blinks. So he he, he can pull his eyelid up, but Whatever nerve is damaged wouldn't allow it to close, but that little gold bar will pull it down. And gold's body accepts readily, and and uh, heavy as it is, neatest thing. Every time somebody came, I said, "Would you mind if I tell them about your eye?" <laughs> uh, eye. Matt Cantonese, Virginia Matt, Beach. Matt, what's his last name? He was in July class, Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Well, anybody in Virginia Beach? I think, yeah. 757, you need a shirt. Uh, Todd and Michelle from the June 23 class. Todd and Michelle. First and only husband and wife. Actually, I had a husband and wife team, but they weren't vets. Two combat wounded vets in the same house. Michelle was uh, military police. And Todd, what was Todd? I know he works for, he works for uh, Border Patrol down yeah, in, in the U.S. But what was, what was Todd's job in the military? Do you remember, Jake? Was it? It's probably the reason they met is because Michelle arrested him. Anyway, they actually, they came married and they left married. That's all I cared about. <laughs> awesome, folks. Anybody else, Chuck? Um, yeah. Uh, Ferris Butler. Ferris. Ferris Bueller. Bueller. Ferris. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Ferris is a great guy. Ferris, Ferris knows all about helping other people because he does a ton for wounded vets. And he's an, a single amputee himself. Great guy. Uh, Tim Pierce. Tim Pierce is uh, Vietnam. It wasn't. It was Tim. Uh, Tim's Jeff's friend. Tim Pierce is one of the original, original EODs. Great guy, Tim. I actually saw your picture the other day. Uh, Tim, and Jeff thinks a lot of him. So if Jeff thinks a lot of him, then you know he's good. Kevin Ke on. Kevin Burris is on. Hey, Kev. So if you are in the market for something really significant or important in your life. If you have a date in your life that means something, your anniversary better be one of them, or the birth of a child, what better thing to do than to carve it in stone? So I have some sayings that are really important that I, I want to ingrain in my brain. So I get Kevin to do them. He does laser engraving on slant, on slant it. How about slate and granite? Uh, he's got one, this one right here. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If you don't understand that, read... Uh, Get some material by Bob Proctor or read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And then over there, I've got uh, rules for success. And he's Kevin. He, Kevin's doing me a new one. And it says, uh, it's for our guys over there. He said, remember, second, um, what, what, what's the expression? Second place means you're the first loser. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, and Jeff order, 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 get something from Kev. BurrisWoodworking.com. And Jeff and Kim? Jeff, Jeff and Kim are on. Jeff and Kim. You already gave Kim lots of love. You haven't mentioned Jeff hardly. So well, he's... He'll be hurt. He gets his share. And our very he's own... He's got Kim. Our very own Al McNeil is on. Al, be ready. We've got a lot of work to do this week. Al's coming out with me. I'm excited about that. We're going to have uh, we're gonna have a good time. Al, by the way, I want... Can you bring the bagpipes with you? I think that would that add a really... 
a uh, really great thing to it, and you can, and I'll pay the baggage fee. Anybody else? Uh, Santa's, Santa and Mrs. Claus. Santa there. and Mrs. Claus. Welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. How's our numbers, Frick? Uh, donations? No, how many people we have on? 706. 706? Well, good, because I told Debbie she was going to be cutting hair in front of 700 people. Don't be nervous. Uh, Jack Lane's here My with hair. us. He wanted... Um, he wanted me to post a picture of Stella, so I'm going to put that on oh, the screen Oh, I right saw now. a picture the other day. So if you've been following us for a while, you'll remember Stella. She was born at how many weeks? 20? 21? 21 or 22. Yeah, just a little tiny thing. But she survived. You wouldn't believe the picture of her. Little Stella. I, and every time we would mention her, I'd say, Stella! Cute little girl. Jack's great-granddaughter. And Jack Lane is, as I mentioned, Jack runs the Purple Heart Project. So ask Jack Bench, to tell Bench me, brigade. just give us an update. Bench Brigade. Bench Brigade. What did I say? Purple Heart Project. Yeah, well, whatever. Um, <laughs> ask him uh, for a number on how many benches we've actually delivered to date. Jack, tell, tell us how many benches we've delivered to date, would you please? Make sure you're going on to Kim's website, stripetomato.com, and get yourself a T-shirt. Get in on the draw. Remember... I'm putting ten dollars in the kitty for every shirt that is sold. Whatever that is, we'll give away. It might be a. It might be one of these new wood handled dovetail saws. Chris, hand me one of those, would you please? One of the ones that's done. You had to grab the one that wasn't finished. Just kidding. Uh, Colin Wilson just reminded everybody to click the like button. We have over seven hundred viewers, but only two hundred nineteen likes. This so. is uh, this is it's not one not finished yet, but this is one of the resident prey did. Resin impregnated maple dovetail sauce that will become a regular item quite soon. And if you're interested in expanding your skills, you want to learn drawer making, come join our class. I'm, I, I'm really looking forward to it because everybody that comes to that class, I already know because you had to have been to the class before. So love to have you join us. Jack and, Lane. and don't forget too, you can actually stay in one of our Airbnbs right here. So you're literally 50 steps from the shop. What frick? Uh, Jack Lane says that 134 benches have been delivered to date. 100, that's a milestone. 134 benches. And that means, that means uh, a lot of people. We've got guys that have, that have made seven and eight benches, uh, which is just fantastic. So to have that many vets that are home working on a workbench to built by a volunteer just says a whole lot about this program. Cool. So happy to be part of it. Who? who? Uh, pa Patrick Glenn from the class. Class number 26. Hey, Pat. And I remember. Kent Boys is on. And Kent Boys. Yeah, Kent wasn't a vet, but Kent is, uh, there's a board that, that uh, oversees the Purple Heart Project, the, 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 uh, the fundraising part of it, which is the charity. It's Ken Boys and, and uh, Ken Anthony and Jack Lane and Luther Sheely. So those are the four. And then there'll be a couple other ones added, too, when we have a Canadian. And just a quick update, Ken said uh, the other day that the Canadian, the Canadian tax status, charitable donation company, whatever, is going to be possibly ready as soon as May. May. We hope. But yeah, we hope, which will be good. Okay, another question, Frick? 15 minutes for hair time. How much, what are we at? What's our dollar value? 24,633. Ooh, close. 24,000? Oh, we'd be so happy to beat that 30,000. Come on, Moose, kick in. We're not even over the 25, so you can't even cut Actually, your hair. Moose did kick in. But we're not even over the what? You're not even over the 25. I'm so you, looking ahead. You can't even cut your hair. Can't please, people. Ahead. Please, people. Yeah. <laughs> Frick, how's my hair? Friggin' ridiculous. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's answer some questions. Since yes, you're give me some chatting questions. too much. Cal around the house. Uh, that's his username in the chat. That's probably Calvin. He says, "Who is your woodworking teacher or mentor you've had that you've had that you think about most often when you are working?" Well, actually, two of them. So this is this is Doctor Dale Nish. Dale died about ten years ago, and Dale was the uh, program director at BYU. I should dust a little more often. What do you expect from a shop? This is Dale and his wife, Noreen. And Dale was a Canadian from Lethbridge, Alberta, but lived in Provo, Utah, and he ran the program at BYU. And I met him when I very first went there.
And at the end of the semester, he came to me and he said, what are you doing next year? And I said, well, I'm not coming back here. I wasn't thrilled. He said, well, he said, I've been teaching here for 20 whatever years. He said, you've got the best hands I've seen and, 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 and fast. So if you want to come back, I will hire you as my assistant and I'll get you a scholarship. That, at the time, that meant nothing to me because I didn't want to be there. But I went home, um, uh, started working for my father building houses and decided I didn't want to do that either. Got married in the summer of 1985, called Dale Nish up. He says, yeah, I remember you, and the offer still stands. So I never looked back. And because of Dale, he, he, uh, he had me. I, I, never had, I never went to a base football game the whole time I was there because we were living on a 60-cent dollar, meaning by the time you converted Canadian dollars into U.S., that's what you had, 60 cents. And so I needed to work, and Dale found me work every Saturday. I always had work, whether it was digging holes or building furniture for people. Anyway, Dale, because of that, Dale got me into uh, got me an opportunity to work at Anderson Ranch Arts Center in the summer of 1987. That's where I met Alan Peters, and so Alan Peters is uh, is uh, Dale is my work ethic, wood loving mentor, and Alan Peters is my craftsmanship uh, mentor. And nobody was nobody was better than Alan Peters. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Both gentlemen have passed. So it's up to me to share what I know, learned from them and the little bit that I added to it. So you're always standing on the shoulders of somebody. Next, Frick. Next one comes from Tom Maholland in the chat. Hey, Tom. Would you give some tips on using the fret saw? Yeah, I can give you some tips on using the fret saw. So a couple things you want to remember. It cuts on the pull. So you want the teeth facing you. So when you're pulling it like that, you should feel it grabbing. I could push it this way without a problem. I pulled it that way, I would have a shorter thumb. Uh, you want the blade to be really tight. You don't want it to, it's a very thin blade. The reason we use a very thin blade is because we need it to fit down the kerf left by the dovetail saw on the piece of wood that I don't have here to show you. But typically, uh, here, yes, no. I can make one quick enough. Can't use a coping saw for this because the coping saw blade is too thick. So after you've made your cuts for your dovetail, and you've got to remove that waste, you need a blade thin enough to get down that kerf without wrecking it because that kerf is going to be a, your joint surface. So I've put the blade in, and you'll notice that I have, I have a limited depth of throat. So if I was having to remove the waste, I wouldn't be able to go any farther than that. So what I do is after I've put the blade in place, I get a pair of um, pliers, needle nose, whatever. Come on, get out of there. Get, 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 get. And I grab the blade right here. And I give it about a 30 degree twist there and a 30 degree twist there. What that does is makes it so that when I'm making a horizontal cut, because the blade has been twisted, the frame stays up here. So now I can, and I gotta remember when I'm sliding down that curve, I gotta lay it over like that to coincide with the twist in the blade. When I get to the bottom and start sawing, a horizontal cut means the frame is up here, so I have no restrictions. You want that blade to be really tight so that it does not bow on you when you're going through the wood. And remember, it's thin, so that it'll get down that kerf. So because it's thin, it has to be really tight. Make sure these clamps are good and tight. And I, I, I get as much pressure as I can here before I then come up here with this wing net and really tighten it up. Now get one from us, because what we do is we go in and we pin the handles, because they are notorious for coming off, so we drill them and pin them. We tape them so you can get some grip on that thing. And that is as good a, a, a fret saw as you need. It's a wasting tool. Remember that. Uh, I was going to show you some. Oh, yeah. I want to everyone take over here. So uh, just take a quick look over here. So we, we have, let me tell you something. Uh, one of the other things that we do for the vets is we give them some on, ongoing training. So Jake and I, in 2011, started a business called the, uh, the Online Workshop. So what we do now is we, we film three times a week three 45-minute sessions, training you, talking to you very informally, and showing you how to do the stuff we're doing. 
we start from the design phase and we go right through to the finish. Um, our current project, and, and we, oh, by the way, it's, it's a membership fee, but wounded vets get it for life for free. So once they've come to our class, they can stay connected through that. And we've, we've got 3, 000, more than 3,000 episodes on there building multiple pieces of furniture, both shop furniture and house furniture. So what we're currently working on, I'm, gonna, I'm getting you jazzed, jacked up on for this. So this, well, I always build prototype first. So this is the prototype made out of plywood, allowed us to get all the spacing for the tools, the drawers, the whole bit. Now, once we are done, we are, uh, we are, this is ready to come off. Once we are done the prototype, I hope that didn't hit where I thought it might have hit. I think it hit the, hopefully it hit the plane. Let me put my glasses on. No? Good. I'd have to charge extra. So this is, this is made out of walnut. And uh, here's the wing. So the wing will go on, one wing will go on here, one wing will go on the other side. And then when you're done, they'll close. Now these are the drawers and we wanted to be able to lock the drawers because you don't want people getting into your stuff. So we developed a system that would allow us to, uh, see the, doors are, the drawers are locked right now, you can't open them. So then this is gonna be a little bit fancier, but you come in here and you'll screw this in. Doesn't have to come up very far. And now the drawer's open. Isn't that cool? Each drawer has a tray. Why? Well, you really didn't have enough room there to make two drawers. So, and if you have one drawer, by the time you got more than one layer of stuff on there, you lose everything else. So we put in a little tray. The little trays have little tiny dovetails that we use our little three-quarter dovetail saw to cut. And you'll see in the back, there's a little piece of brass with a hole in it. And there's a pin, three different pins in there that drop down in to, to uh, lock this drawer. Isn't that cool? Don't you love those? The drawer sides are aspen. The rest of it is walnut. These are through wedge tenons. And, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Here's where our saw till. So Willie made these for me. Willie's our 83-year-old fabricator who we're not allowing to retire. I got to trim off the brass. But this comes out, and then your saw, your saw will fit down in there. I just hate the fact that I know this is going to get beat up when it's used, but that's life. Sit. And then cross cut on this side, rip on this side. So you've got your shoulder plane here, and all of the places for the planes are lined in leather, just to make it a little quieter. Shoulder plane over here. Now, we just did this one tonight, so the coping saw will sit there, and the fret saw will sit right there. Now, we're going to have a drawer bottom plane by, made by Master Craftsman Jesse Rufians. It'll sit in here, and then in here are three saws. That's our next challenge, is to make our holder for the three saws. Our hammer's going to sit up here, and then this is the final wing over here. It's going to have all the drilling apparatus, and that was a real pain trying to figure out, so I put that off to last. So, once we're done... You guys get to fill it with tools. Everybody, everybody gets to pay for one of the tools in there. When it's all filled, we're going to figure out a way to raffle it off or auction it off and to, to raise money for, uh, to our, for our, our, uh, our purpose, our Purple Heart Project. Isn't that going to be fun? We just broke 25000 Yay, good. Now let's get 30. We got 35 minutes. Isn't Actually, we need, to get, we need to get $30,001. <laughs> what? Isn't the haircut at 830 yeah, yeah, it's, fine. it's, it's yeah, not yet. Um, Frick, question. Ken, any more, any more vets? Uh, yeah. Uh, vets. John Boyd and Marmonko, JD. Hey, John. John's a local. John was here this year. Where are you going with that? I usually don't let people touch this. <laughs> Unless you buy it. I just need it to place for the oh. What? I, I'm just, uh, it's, it's so hard having this in the shop because we film. I can't be built working on it when we're not filming. So it's, it just, 
it's so susceptible to getting dinged, and I just fear that something drastic is going to happen before we get it finished. Next, Fred. Uh, <clears throat> Gary Gibbons uh, in the chat says, Hey, Gary. How do you deal with the blotchy appearance on cherry when finishing? Uh, wait, it'll darken and it'll all disappear. It's, uh, I, I haven't, you know what? Some people worry about that. I don't. Wood is wood. And as long as it's not a fault of yours or mine in the way we've prepared the wood, meaning if you leave a rough area, it's going to suck up a lot more finish and it's going to look different. But if the surface is all prepared properly and just the way the grain is, some will absorb more than others, that's wood. That's wood. I don't, don't sweat that. Don't not sweat that. And time, it'll, it'll change. And you know what? It's real. Next, Frank. Uh, Mike Bruins in the chat says, do you still play adult hockey? If so, do you have any physical side effects that limit you in the shop? Say that again. Do you still play adult hockey? And if you do, do you have any physical side effects that limit you in the shop? Yeah, yeah. Skating the other day, my hair is in my mouth, and I'm trying to I'm trying to get my hands and shove it up into my helmet. Yes, we play we play Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Remind me to talk about a vet's coming. Year round, we uh, no breaks. Troy is our uh, goalie. Sometimes we like him, sometimes we don't. Moose Moose is 75 years old. Moose still plays. Moose plays Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday and Sunday. Not anymore. Five days a week. Tuesday and Thursday morning. Tuesday and Thursday morning. And Tuesday and Thursday morning. So on Thursdays and Tuesday and Thursday, he plays in the morning and at noontime. So that's the only thing we do up here in Canada. So, yes, we still play. And uh, I tore my meniscus playing hockey, but uh, I don't let I, Well, the only bad thing is I can only play three times a week or else it hurts. Other than that, it's a great reason. It's, you know what? I would only go running if somebody was chasing me with a knife. But on the ice, whack, whack, whack. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a, if you have never played, it is a wonderful sport. Moose will sometimes say to me, we were sitting on the bench, we're just after a shift, and he goes, does it get any better than this? No, it does not. It's a thrill. I play with my four, my four sons play with me, and I tell them, I said, remember, there's no relations once we step on the ice. But, yeah, it's a blast. I love it. No, I love my wife. I really like playing hockey. All right, it's so... Time for a haircut? Well, we got Kim on uh, just to give us the update on the Can shirts. Can you go get Debbie and tell her that we're ready? Uh, Mike, J Jeff, Chris? Can you get Debbie? And I need the... Uh, I need that... Sh that uh, I, need the I need your chair. It's one that hair won't get on. You can have this wooden one. Do we have a... Where's, yeah, can I come over and see her? Yeah, do we have a bag or something to put the hair in for the cancer? Yeah, but she's got all that thing too. She has okay, to put perfect. pigtails first. Where's Kim? All right, Kim is on Hi, Kim. my. She's on my she's phone on, she's here. Right here. Yeah. Go ahead, Kim. Give us the update. You can't see us, but you're on there. Away from my computer, we were at 120 shirts. So. Whoa! 120. Yeah. I know what you're doing for the next three days. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not over yet. We still got another half hour. Pardon me? We're not, it's not over yet. We still got another half hour. I know, sir. Okay. Keep, keep selling them. Will do. Keep selling them. We may, go, we may go over a little bit. So who's, who's, writing all the names on little, who's writing all the names on little pieces of paper? Who's writing the names on the little pieces of paper? Jeff has the oh, Jeff has Jeff it playing in the background, so it, yeah. it's a little bit of a cold. I said, who's writing the names on the little pieces of paper? Keeping track in an Excel sheet. I'm not going to trust Jeff with something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> All right, keep going. I will. Thank you, How Rob. many? What, what are we up to? 120 shirts? You guys are awesome, but get her more than that. Make her so busy she she won't get to sleep for the next week. What? 
That's good. So 120 shirts. Hey, where's the, I, I got a, I got a chair right here. Right there? Yeah, this one. Keep sending your questions in because we'll answer some quick ones while he's sitting in the chair. Yep. Ones Keep that going. don't require a demonstration. Jake, what do you use? What do you using that plug for? Okay. Super uh, power. Todd wants to know. Who's Todd? Oh, Todd and. Oh, you got to let you know. Chair way up. What? Yeah. Todd wanted to know what? Todd wanted you to know that he was infantry, the only real job in the military. <laughs> He was a grunt. Good, Todd. Question, Frick? It's time. Question? Uh, okay, question. Ed Kroc in the chat says, where do you buy your Hollywood from? Hollywood. California. Hmm. Um, I get it from Mel. Mel at Exotic Woods in uh, Burlington, Ontario. As far as I know, it only comes, it only grows in one place, harvested in Maryland. It's very expensive, but it's beautiful wood. I love it. Oh, I haven't had one of these on my neck in a long time. <laughs> Honey, did you want a picture real quick before we, we cut this? Me and you? Like that? <laughs> no. You want a picture? I'll get one. All right. This is my wife, Kim. Come over here. It's a big event. <laughs> turn around. Yeah, turn around this way. No, see your hair. Oh. Oh, she wants back-to-back -back hair. There. Took two years. I'm not doing it again. Oh, yeah, one like this. Camera shot. She almost broke her neck trying to get away. Hey, which one's your wife? <laughs> I got it. Ready? All right. All right. Let's you go. sure? You sure you want this? <laughs> I think you should have hair color around. No, they don't want coloring in there, do they? Oh. Pink on one side, purple on the other. <laughs> keep going. Keep talking so we can answer more questions. So we have some more people in here. We have my grandson, my oldest grandson, Bentley, and, and Megan, Jake's wife, who's pregnant with baby number two of nine and due in May. Not, they don't have nine. No. <laughs> I'm just thinking ahead. Gina's out there. Gina, Gina's here. What'd you say? This is Debbie. So I used to rent space to Debbie, and because our evil government <laughs> shut down businesses, they keep forgetting that we hire them. Anyway, 15 days, no income. She ended up, her business closed. And that's when I said, I'm not cutting my hair until this changes. What do you, I'll just trust her. <laughs> I'll just trust her. <laughs> Anything's better than what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, keep going with questions. I can talk. All right, you got the Hollywood one. Um, Mike, Question for Bentley? Who's your favorite? How many springs are in a basketball that make it bounce? Who's your favorite basketball player, Bentley? Steph Curry. Steph Curry, all right. Good choice. Uh, Mitch Cosman? Okay, question from Mike Partento from the from the chat. What is your view on sharpening using paper in, in lieu of stones? No. No, the problem with paper, this, this is a little bit complicated to explain, but the problem with paper, if you set paper on a piece of glass, between the abrasive and the glass, there's paper, and it's compressible. So if you were to look at the an asphalt road in a hot summer day and a big heavy trucks going on it, there's always going to be a wave in the pavement directly ahead of the wheel. And the same thing occurs when you're sharpening, particularly when you're doing the back of the blade. As you're pushing along, there's a little wave in the front, and that takes away from your ability to get that back of a chisel dead flat. So Jake likes to do my chisels, and we do them on a hard back surface, meaning a, a hard stone, and that's how you'll get that perfect result. The other thing about pa the wet dry paper is not cheap, so that tends to be a penny wise, dollar foolish proposition because the paper doesn't last very long, and although it's inexpensive initially, over any period of time, you'd be better off buying the Shapton stones. Jake, do we have a new? Are we? Are we get those new stones ready? All right, make the cut. Jake, first cut. No. Did Jake? Are we? No, we're not. No. All right. 
Here we go. Big first cut. Go ahead. Ow. Ow. Oh, I already feel my helmet loosening up. <laughs> I'll have to adjust it. Holy cow. Need to get, put it through the bandsaw. Who sharpened those scissors? <laughs> you have a lot do you want, me, you want me to? 30 seconds to cut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you want me you to grab a saw? I can grab a chisel. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Speaking of dye and color and red. Is my head going to spring up when this comes off? Wow, that's thick. Are you through? Just about. One oh. final step. Well, you know what? That's a good trade. What, what, uh, Kim, you know what we're at? Kim, yeah. do you know how much money we're at? Just what I said. Well, we're not done. Okay. Well, then you can't say. Perfect. That's it? You're finished? <laughs> Don't expect a big tip for that. Turn around. It looks still the same. Long. Still, still really long. You're still in your Just shave it off. <laughs> you know how much money I spent in shampoo and conditioner? And so I have a much greater appreciation for women with long hair. I love long hair, so my wife, I much, I greatly appreciate now. What a pain to wash it. I'm used to going in the shower 30 seconds, and you're done. Now my fingers get stuck in there when I'm trying to do my scalp, and it takes a half an hour to rinse it out. Uh -uh. Next question, Prick. Uh, Barry Doxy in hey, the Barry. chat. He says, are you aware of any woods that chemically react when put together? No. No, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of any woods that react... I mean, there's lots of woods that... Uh, 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 let me think about that a little bit more. We got lots of water bottles. Get her one of the world's greatest... Um, uh, oak with metal easily goes black, but actually two woods reacting against each other... I know I don't know of any. Yeah. Next, Frick. Any more vets? Uh -huh. Jake, Al, Ken. <laughs> no. Any more questions, Frick? Uh, a couple. Yep, we got. Uh, this is from Barnabas. Klein. How many people are watching oh, no. this foolishness? Eight oh eight. Debbie. What? Eight hundred and eight people are watching this. Oh really? Don't screw up. <laughs> no, you just just speed it up. Just cut it right off. Okay, this is from Barnabas Klein. He's Thank a you. he's a seventeen year old and he loves woodworking. What's your advice? Where is he? Uh, he's just in the chat. Maybe Barnabas. Can, yeah, Barnabas Klein. Hey Barnabas. Barnabas, sorry. What I is your advice going. on how to start? There we go. Uh, okay, say that say that again. So he's seventeen years old. He loves woodworking and he wants advice on how to start. How to start woodworking? Well, uh, I wish you told me a little bit more, but I will say this: you want to start with hand tools. Because all a power tool is, is a hand tool method that has a motor attached to it. So if you really want to be good with power tools, you learn to do it with hand tools and you understand the process. Um, I just, and hand tools are safer, obviously, except unless your name's Frick. Funny. Um, yeah, hand tools. Learn to sharpen and you'll, you'll understand how a sharp edge interacts with the wood. And that's whether it's a power tool or a hand tool. So definitely start with hand tools. You, the first thing you need to learn to do is sharpen. So whether it's chisels or planes, I would say both. Get yourself a five and a half. That's the main plane you're going to use. And a couple of chisels, a quarter inch and a half inch, and a good rub Cosman dovetail saw, because no other saw will cut like a... Ours. And then, and then just start, just get some easy wood that's easy to process. Pine's a great example. And just, um, just start cutting and planing and trying to make a flat surface. You know, at, at BYU, they had a really good exercise. And it was a block of wood that was about 12 inches long by inch and a half square. And you, got, you received it rough, and you had to make it 
square, flat, parallel sides. And then what they would have you do is they would have you cut a half lap on one end and a half lap on the other end. And you would have to cut it precisely. And then you would cut the, board, the piece off in the middle and you had to then turn around and see if the two pieces fit. And if they fit, then when it went together, sides were nice and smooth and flush. Then you would do the same exercise, you would do a T-lap. So you would cut a half lap on one end and you would cut in the middle of the board, you would cut the opening for it. And then again, you have to do all the pieces relying on your ability to measure and cut because then once you've cut the board half, you have to take it around and see if it would fit. I'll, uh, if you, if you email me, I'll, I think I have the, the plans for that and I'll send them to you. It's a good exercise. But definitely start with, start with uh, wood, easy to work like softwood and start with hand tools. Absolutely start with hand tools. Good luck with it. Get yourself a membership to an online workshop. A lot, tons of, tons of information in there. Next, Frick. Uh, just a couple quick ones in the chat. Where did it go? What, are we up, are we up over 25,000, Ken? Yeah. yeah. Where? Nice. On our way to 30? <clears throat> the second off to the right. Gerald Dvorak wants to know who your favorite hockey player of all time is. Bobby Orr. <laughs> Rich. Oh, Rich. sorry. Sorry. Bruce McLeod. <laughs> he was about to get up and leave. Then Bobby Orr. Who's your Can't favorite? Can't tell them apart some days. Who's your favorite goalie? <laughs> the one who says, the one who says, yes, I'll be there. <laughs> Sometimes Troy Clark. We're at 25, 458. Jerry Cheevers. 25, Played 458. For Boston. 25 what? 458. 25, 458? Yeah. We got to hit 30. 30, 01. Oh, you like her playing with your hair? <laughs> Debbie? Everyone's saying you should get a military cut. Yeah, yeah they're saying they feel chipped. <laughs> I would do it. I would do it, but my wife won't, and I, have, I don't like sleeping on the couch. I would gladly... What number would that be, Frick? What? What number would you do for a... Uh, probably a two or maybe even a one. Yeah. Would have been easier. It's a great expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then who would you be? Next, Frick. Uh, Rigid Ron wants to know if you fish, and if so, what kind of fishing do you do? So I, uh, I used to, when I lived in Oregon, I used to fish the Rogue River every Monday. That was our day to do activities like that, and uh, fish and steelhead. Fly fish. I really love to fly fish. But um, I have 10 children. I uh, run this business. I run, I, I organize the pickup hockey year-round. Uh, I don't know what other, what other things that I do. And it takes away from a lot of time. But I, I used to, and I said the other, yesterday, I said, we are going to do that this year. I have a little bass boat. So I used to take my kids fishing. 20 minutes, we could be in a place where we've caught 11 different species of fish in one spot, all the way up to a five-pound shad. And uh, my daughter, uh, Annika, now Chloe, she would put her brothers to shame because she would... She would bait her hooks and take her own fish off, and they were, ooh, I can't touch that. That would be Bo and Mitch. Bentley, did Bentley came fish with us, didn't he? Yep. So i got to go back to doing that. So if, if I, uh, I mean, I would love to go back to fly fishing. There's, there's a tranquility about uh, fly fishing that I always enjoyed. Uh, Vincent Esposito says, what brand of hand tools Any brother to... Phil? Brother in relation to Phil or Tony? What brand of hand tools did you use at BYU? Uh, they had their, well, I had my own tools because if you're serious, when you go to, a, if you're serious about this and you go to a public school, you realize right away that uh, you don't want any of their hand tools. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but they get brutalized. So I always had my own, but they had typical Stanley's in the Stanley Plains. Um, probably distant back saws. They didn't have much for dovetail saws. The chisels were Stanley's. I mean, this is, we're talking 1983, and the shops would have been around for 50 years prior to that or more. So everything would have, every, most hand tools would have been Stanley or Miller Falls, any of the popular U.S. names, back when the tools were actually made in the U.S. 
He's got a br- yes, hopefully, yes, hopefully yes. those days will come back. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jeff O'Connor wants to know, who is your favorite son-in-law? <laughs> well, I'm waiting for one. <laughs> I'll end this stream right now. <laughs> uh, CR McBride says, during your time running your business, what are you most proud of and what is your biggest regret? In time running my business, what am I most proud of? Well, I'm probably most proud of the fact that uh, several of my children uh, have decided to join us. And my biggest regret uh, would probably be not f- photographing and keeping a record of all the stuff that I made over the years. That's the one thing I can't go back and recapture. But as I said earlier, it was a, fu- it was a function of, I mean... My last year of woodworking for a living, my gross sales were $42,000. That was in 1999. We had five children, I think, at the time. So if you can imagine, before you paid for your lumber, before you did your, took care of your power bill, $42,000 didn't go very far. So I had no time to be uh, holding on to something to get a good picture of it. It was... I, I, I'll give you an example. I had a commission from uh, a group of anesthetists and they, when somebody was retiring, and the, uh, the head of that program was a guy named Ian, and he, he used to come here and take classes with me, really good guy, and uh, he commissioned me to build a desk, design and build a desk for the anesthetist that was retiring. And uh, he gave me lots of lead time. I probably had eight months, nine months. And about two weeks before it was to be delivered, I remember calling him, I said, Ian, what's the exact date you need this for? He was probably sensing what I was getting at, and he told me. And uh, a a couple days before, I said, now, I know you need it for Thursday, but what time on Thursday? And he said, well, the presentation is going to be in the evening. I said, okay, Thursday evening. And the day before, I called, and I said, what time is the actual presentation? It was at Shadow Lawn. And uh, he said, well, the event starts at 7, and we'll probably make the presentation at about 8. And uh, late that afternoon, I called, and I was holding one of the drawer fronts with a hair dryer, blowing, warming, dry, getting the finish to dry. And I called and said, you sure it's ready at 8, huh? He says, yep. Yeah. He was really nervous at that point. I don't have a who, which, who helped me, but we literally, we literally set it down just outside the room they were in. And I think they were probably coming out to get it as we were sneaking out the side door. So that's the kind of, uh, that's the kind of hectic schedule. Needless to say, I didn't have time to take a picture of that one. But I did go to the guy's house afterwards and get some pictures. Really nice desk. I liked it. Had a leather inlaid top and it was white oak. And it was fun to, fun to build. Next. Uh, Lynx G in the chat. Hey, Lynx. For your finish, what is the wax that you have been using? It's called Ren- Renaissance Wax. It's really expensive, but I like it. Um, for small light, I-, I really like it. I mean, it's, it couldn't get any simpler. In fact, somebody asked me earlier about finishes. I forgot to add this to it. When it comes to small boxes and turnings, I mean, one coat, it tells you. You're not getting any benefit from a second, third, or fourth coat. It goes on, it dries almost instantly, so you've got to put it on and then wipe it right off. And it just gives it a lovely feel. I, I really like it. I like it enough that we actually sell it now because uh, we, I use, we sell the stuff I use, and I use the stuff we sell. And the first one is the most important. So every once in a while, we take a walk through the shop, and we'll say, Jake and I was like, okay, what, what do we use that we haven't offered for sale? So we are somebody hurt. That would be my son. Yeah. We, uh, that sounds that, something that we just added to our product line that will probably come out next week. Ken, can you grab it? It's right here. Isn't, it, isn't that, right. that package of pine? No, I already put them on. Oh. <clears throat> so a lot of people <coughs> who don't have access to wood and tools and whatever want to get into dovetails, and that's something you can do in your spare bedroom. So now we're selling a bundle of 12-inch uh, by 3 and a half inch by five inch inch pine, clear white northern white pine, beautiful wood, all milled up, square edges, 
six pieces in a bundle so that when you buy your tools, you can buy a, piece, a package of that so you can literally go right to your bench. Do you so. really want it that long in the front? She's, she's, she's I didn't cutting. want to stand in the ca- front of the camera oh, when you go no. talking. <laughs> Next, Frick. Uh, Matt Cantonese in the chat says, can, can Rob explain why he loves the saw stop <laughs> table saw? Besides safety, how does it cut and last compared to bigger names like Paramatic, et cetera? Well, uh, all of the other brands are shrinking rapidly. Power ma- pa- uh, so if you follow the story on SawStop, when they developed the technology, it was a, a physicist in Oregon that developed it. And uh, they took it to all the saw manufacturers. And I remember following along the story. It was in Woodshop News. And all the manufacturers were all over it. But then they all, at the same time, they all turned it down. And apparently, their legal department said, if you do this, you're admitting that what you were selling was dangerous. So SawStop said, well, that's fine. We'll just build our own saw. So they took the best features. I mean, the old standards were the Powermatic, the Unisaw, and the General, General 350. <clears throat> and they took the best features off all those saws, and they either incorporated them or one up them. So the top on the saw stop is a little bit bigger than all the rest of them. The best example is the power transmission on all those saws I mentioned, they use three matched V-belts, little short V-belts. And the reason they use three is so there's no slippage. But it must take a quarter of a horsepower just to turn those stupid things because those belts are so stiff. So what saw stop did is they used a serpentine belt. Think of the belt that's on your, fa- on your fan motor, on your fan on your car. So it's got a whole bunch of little ridges in it. And those little ridges sitting in those little grooves on the pulleys give you all that extra um, surface area because it's all about surface area, Jerry. And The power has nowhere to hide. The power has nowhere to hide. It doesn't slip, but it flexes easy. So, I mean, it turns remarkably easy. Just a whole bunch of great features. I like the fact that you align the tabletop with the trunnion below or the blade there are two, how many bolts, Jake? Four. There's four bolts underneath, but there's a center pin on the front, and on the back, on either side, there's an, a bolt. So you tighten one bolt, you loosen the other, and everything pivots off that center pin until you get it exactly where you want it. All the other saws, you loosen the four bolts, and then you play with it, and hopefully you can get it in the right spot when you tighten them all up, but this actually has an indexing device. Speaking of which, Jake has just been testing a... Jake, do you know the guy's name? No. A fella sent us this device for, uh, specifically, is that what he made it for? Yeah. For lining up well, no, your fence yeah. and your saw blade to your uh, your uh, slots. And, uh, and we used it for lining up. We were having a hard time getting the splitter to be lined up properly with the blade. And uh, that was, Jake was able to dial all that in, so... Um, if this guy brings this product to market, we'll be sure to carry it because it was quite very impressed with it. Next, Frick. Bentley, do me a favor. There's Tic Tacs right there. By, my, Just give me a couple. What? You see them? Little bags of Tic Tacs? Right, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Keep them right there. There you go. What? Any more, uh, any more vets, Ken? Thank you. Uh, no. Uh, Boroscoped says... Boroscope? That's his... That's his name? Yeah. Bor- Boroscoped? I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. Uh, has Rob ever built French-fitted presentation slash display boxes, the kind with either felt or velvet lining? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, for a Red Rider BB gun that was... that was... Uh, belonged to the guy that used to own the home hardware over here a long time ago. I did. I, that, that was a long time ago, back in the uh, mid-'80s. That's probably the only time. Next, Rick. Richard Willis wants to know if you can play in an outside radius. Hey, Richard. Yes, you can play in an outside radius. Um, as, as I was doing it today. I, uh, I actually prefer to use a spoke shave when I'm doing it, and I, use, I, I shear with the spoke shave. So instead of pulling it straight on... I shear it, which makes it helps you avoid the chatter. But yeah, you can do the outside radius with a plane. You just can't do the inside radius. 
Next. Uh, Stephen, Ben, do you still like the link belts for your power tools? Yeah. Yeah, link belts, instead of, I was talking about the match V-belts that table saws use. Well, the link belt is just a bunch of little wee pieces. It's got a, it's a lot more flexible, and it has much, a much better grip, and you can size just by taking or adding on a piece of the link belt. So it's expensive. I mean, it's not cheap stuff at all, but instead of having to buy a whole bunch of different belts, you just buy a coil of this, and you just adjust accordingly. And they're quieter, too. C.R. McBride wants to know if you have an update on the family living in our Airbnb. Uh, yeah, I was talking to Shane the other day. He, uh, I mean, it's an ongoing battle. I, I, ha I have nothing good to say about uh, the way our government takes care of our veterans. So he's, he's fighting with them to try to get his benefits reinstated. Uh, he just found out that he has Lyme disease. He couldn't understand why he was so exhausted all the time and aching. And then uh, he went to the doctor, and they did all these tests and couldn't find anything. And he said, doctor, well, he says, I forgot to tell you. He said, I had a tick in my back. And so they tested him. Sure enough, he had Lyme disease. So he's on some high-powered antibiotics. I haven't seen him for the last three days, but I told him he's welcome to stay there until April when we, when we need it. But he's, uh, he's coming along. Al's helping him. I asked Al to help him. Al knows what it's like dealing with the government, so... Uh, the people would like to know if they donate another thousand, can they get another inch cut off? <laughs> yeah. Okay, then they'd like to well, donate another five thousand to finish the haircut. <laughs> How many? Uh, th what are we at, Ken? Uh, just one second. I'll do whatever it takes to get us over thirty thousand. There it is. Buzz cut. Buzz cut. Thir buzz cut at thirty. <laughs> you can cut it short. No guard. Yeah, Someone. <laughs> Well, someone said the military cut is one on the sides, two on the top. So that's pretty close to buzz. <laughs> that's two? <laughs> what are we at, Ken? We are at 25998. Are we tapping our guys out? Save a little bit of money for another T-shirt from Kim. I want her to be busy. Can we add the sales from that? <laughs> no. It's for her. Uh, Vincent, uh, another one from Vincent Esposito. Can you veneer a table or box top without banding or otherwise covering the edge? Can you, uh, okay, say that again. Can you veneer a table or box top without banding or otherwise covering the edge? Well, yeah, you can, but then what, what, do you, what are you going to see on the edge? If you're talking about, if you're talking about veneering over solid wood, I do that all the time. If you're talking about veneering over plywood or MDF, well, you can do it, but I mean, you got to do something with the edge. I've I've banded, I've veneered the, I have veneered and then banded. In other words, you saw a solid wood band all the way around with an in, a, the inter, internal core was veneered. So yes, you can do that. Or the other option is you take the substrate. And you band all the way around that, and then you sandwich it in between two pieces of near top and bottom. You can do either or. Just if you do that, you got to be careful because if you're going to veneer the core, veneer the substrate, and then add the band to it, you've got to flush the band up to the veneer, and that takes some very careful planing because you don't have you don't have a whole lo a lot of room for error you end up going through your veneer. But if you get one of our planes that Ken and the boys Tune up, sharpen up, you'll be able to plain veneer. Not a problem. Next. Uh, Cal, you like. Have a look? No, I don't care. Cal <laughs> in the chat says, What is something you really want to build but haven't done yet? Oh. A boat. A boat? A boat? A boat. Well, I have built boats before, but um, what do you want to build right now? Grips. Oh yeah, yeah. I bought the uh, I bought Bo and Mitch, Bo and who? Oh, it's my son Rex's birthday today. Happy birthday, Rex! He's thirty-three. So I bought Rex and Jake 
<coughs> yeah, each a, a, a Ruger six shot, and uh, I was I want to make really nice grips for them. Haven't it taken the time to do it? In this country, I'd probably get arrested. Can any more vets? No. No. He's over there behind the bandsaw talking to somebody. <laughs> Are you? Any more questions, Frick? Um, how do you? This is from John Hennick. How do you make staining the side, or how do you make staining the same on side grain and end, and end grain? End grain. Well, there is a, you can seal the end grain. Now I don't stain, but I remember reading about an end grain sealer that was designed just to do that. So what he's talking about is if you put stain on a piece of wood, the end grain is going to absorb more than the face of the edge. So there's a sealer that you can get that will just slow the absorption or limit the absorption in the end grain. But like I said, I don't, I don't stain things, so I, I have no, uh, no experience or expertise. I don't really have a desire. I like to have the wood as it is. But I know you can look into that. <coughs> Next. All right, we're gonna bring uh, we're gonna bring Kim back on. She's gonna do the draw. Can she talk loud enough so I can hear? Her? Uh. Do it, Debbie. <laughs> they said they would give it five thousand if I got a military cut. <laughs> okay, just a second. <laughs> How much? Can I hear? Can Can you broadcast this so I can hear? I don't know if you let it hear. I have to. I have to switch mics because. What? I have to mute yours because the buzzing is. Uh, that was so good. Good job. Loud. Okay, I'm gonna mute Rob's mic here. All right, go ahead, Kim. All right, so we had 133 orders, and I. I should say I already put all the names into the spinning wheel of winning, and I am going to now tap to spin and see who our winner will be. Here we go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. John Reader. Too late. John Reader is our winner. Oh, John, I know John. Well, tell her to hold on a second. We can do more than one. So she, she sold a oh, She sold 133. Yep. 133 times 10 is $1,330. So for $1,330, Ken, how much is the five and a half fully loaded? Fully loaded. Fully loaded five and a half. 410. 410. So we could do, we could do uh, two fully three. loaded planes, three, and then we'd still have uh, three left over. So we can do, we can do, so how are we going to do this? She, she has the wheel still up. She can draw it. Right. right. So do we want to, do we want to draw four prizes or just one big one? I think, ask, I ask, think Kim, four. ask Kim to make that call. Kim, what do you want to do? What was the question? Do you want to do one big prize uh, or three Four, four good size prizes. Four good size prizes based on the with kit with uh, Rob's ten dollar match on each shirt. Let's go with four. Do she said four? She said four. Yep. Yeah. All right. So here we'll go with number two. We'll spread the spread the wealth. All right. Our next winner is. Barry Doxy. I know he's in the chat. Yeah. We asked one of his questions. And number three. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to wash my hair. You want to hug a strange man? Great. <laughs> yes. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Henry? Yep. And our last and Hi, final. I'm your, I'm your father. 
I've scored on you. <laughs> Back with Mike Miller. Mike Miller. Congrats, Mike. Mike. So, real quick before I go, I wanted to say thank you again to Rob for doing this, and thank you to everyone who made a purchase tonight because you're not only supporting a small business, but twenty um, percent of all the funds are donated back to the Virginia Beach Police Association Benevolent Fund, so you're helping them as well. So I really appreciate everyone tonight. Oh, I forgot about that. Hey, hey. Kim, Kim. Yes. Just, just tell them real quick what you're able to do, what you can provide. Oh, so I do screen printing and embroidery. Um, I do small orders, as small as one shirt and really large orders. So anytime you need custom shirts, whether it's for yourself or for your business, you can hit me up. That's the stripedtomato.com. Yes, the stripedtomato.com. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kim. All right, thank you, guys. Have a good night. See you. Okay, Frick, let's do our draw. Oh, I'm not ready for that. Just uh, say your final goodbyes and... Oh. Here, give this back to So Ken. what are we giving away tonight, Ken? Let's, uh... I, 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 uh let's, give, well, let's give away five nice prizes. That'll cover it. I want like, a lot... I want like most... What, of, uh, Sandflex blocks or <laughs> fret sub leads? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking... I, I want to uh, I want to keep as much of that money as possible for the PHP. Which we got a big bill coming up with that this coming year. So I want to give away five really nice prizes. Um, I think we should give away. You know, the Americans love getting being able to get their hands on our five our fully loaded five and a half. You want to give away five fu fully loaded five and a halves? That's great. We're going to give away five. Fully loaded five and a halfs. So that's Wood River Plain that we've gone through and flattened and squared. It's drilled for the for the grip, and uh, it's got all the bells and whistles in it. The adjuster, the uh, hex drive. So it's you'll love it, and we'll throw in a wax. <laughs> so we'll give away five of those. We're giving away three. Thanks, Debbie. You're welcome. I got to pay you. Can't can't come here for free. Here, thank you. Thank That's a you. blue bill. That's the lowest. <laughs> what? That looked like a blue bill from back here. It was a blue. It was a blue and a blue and a purple and a green. Not cheap. <laughs> so we're giving away three dead cats. We're giving away five. We said five. Five fully loaded five and a half. I think they'll be pretty happy about that. All right. So we're doing three dead cats. Let's do all of them at once. Yeah. Submit. Here we go. Who's that beside you? That would be Lincoln. Is he the chef? He's the chef. And a good one at that. Oh, yes. Lincoln does the, uh, Lincoln does the master, masterful job barbecuing the chicken for our Sunday night meet and greet that we have before every class starts. And for those of you who are coming to our classes, P, uh, training the hand slash PHP this summer, you are in for a treat. You will love it. I promise. All right. So the three dead cats are going to Mark Archer in Nottingham, United Kingdom. Hey, Mark, over in the UK. Second one's going to Dennis Gone in Orange County, California. Den What's his first name? Dennis. Dennis. You'll love it. And third is going to Mark Robson in Wyandotte, Michigan. Ro Mark? Yeah. Mark in Robson. Michigan. You'll, you need two dead cats up there, one on top of the other. Okay, All let's, right. let's give away. You can do the same thing. Let's, get, let's do draw for five, five uh, fully loaded five and a halfs, and I'll, we'll, I'll sign it. All right, here we go. Actually, let's do six. We'll give away one of those, uh, those uh, maple resin uh, dovetail saws that I just... Okay, well, on. I just did five. We'll do the grand prize at the end. Or... Okay. All right, first uh, plane's going to Steve Crawl in Mariposa, California. Steve... Number two is going to Ken in Pennsylvania. Ken? Didn't, didn't put a last name, but uh, remember, if you win, to email support at robcosman.com. Yep. Yep. Website's on the bottom of the screen. Uh, third winner is Jeff Schnab in Indianapolis, Indiana. Jeff. Fourth winner is John Shearer in Bolivia, North Carolina. John. And the fifth one is going to Kyle Prosser in Alaska. Hey, Kyle. 
north to Alaska. Okay, who are we going to send the dovetail saw to? All right, last one. Here we go. Good luck to everybody. You have about a 1 in 700 chance of winning. Know me? <laughs> oh, it's going to Todd Laginus in Fairborn, Ohio. Hey, Todd. Congratulations. So what was our final tally on the night? $26,079. $26,079. That will cover half, half of an entire class. That was awesome. If, I, I, if, it, if it wasn't such a pain, I'd grow my hair and do it all over again. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> thank you from the bottom of my heart. I say thank you for the vets. On the top of your head. On the top of my head and all this floor. The, uh, the vets so uh, deserve it, so enjoy it. If you only could hear some of the stories I hear, how it literally saves their lives, you'd have a, a real lump in your throat too. A uh, big thank you to Jeff and Kim and, and Kevin. I get to work with them twice a week. Have been doing that for a year and a bit, maybe even two years. I can't even lost track. Fantastic people. Support them, please. If you have any reason to send some business their way, they deserve it and they earn it because they actually do very good work. Um, thank you to all the people that stuck around and helped us out tonight. Appreciate you being here. We will be back in two weeks, Frick. Um, yeah, we should be. Yep. We'll be. We'll be back in two weeks. Remember, I'm going to be in Edmonton on Thursday night, Gary Channons for Vets Only. I'm going to be in uh, Florida, end of March, and the 1st of April. So if you're looking to uh, up, your, up your skill. Wait, wait one second. What? Uh, Todd, who won the dovetail size, says he already has one. He'd like to donate to somebody else. All right. Thank you, Todd. That's big of you. So we're I gonna, will... We're going to draw one more name. Oh. It's going to Lee Zong in Australia. Wow. Lee down in Australia. You getting a saw. Good one. Coming to you. Don't forget, if you're interested in, in if you want a great, a fun class, it'll be a ton of work, but it will be fun. It will be a blast. Look at our, our, our uh, drawer making workshop. Those three classes that you have an opportunity to participate in. That's uh, promise you a great time and a lot of skill learned. Ken, anything to say? Any, any vets no. jumped on? What was our final tally tonight on the uh, number of people viewing, Frick? Uh, we had around 850. We had around 850, I believe. Good, good. Big thank you to, uh, to uh, the Wood Whisper and uh, Wood by Right for, thank, for helping us out. We certainly appreciate this. Um, this is great, great community. All right, you guys have a good night. Sorry for keeping you over, but uh, hopefully it was worth it to you. Too. I know it is to me. Okay, we'll see you.